would be, I'm going to tell you a, a pour over recipe and you're going to try it and you're going to be like, Aaron, you're a bald faced liar. This tastes like garbage. Welcome to the Coffee Snobs podcast where we just really love good coffee. Grab your cup of coffee and join us each episode as we explore any and everything coffee related. From pour overs to lattes to the coffee experience, we explore it all. Because, well, life's too short to drink bad coffee. Let's go. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the Coffee Snobs podcast. My name is Aaron and I have my good friend, James Tyler Dance. <laughs> yes. Hello. How are you, Aaron? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we're doing well on today. Uh, how caffeinated are you for this one? I'm fairly caffeinated. I, I had some uh, pour over this morning and a homemade latte, and I'm feeling pretty good. Well, I'm going to tell you that this episode is probably going to be short because my cup is empty and I am about 200 yards from the coffee machine. And I want some coffee. So let's get into it. Correct. You you just pop it in and go, right? Yeah, sure. So Tyler, let's just jump right into it. What is in your cup? What is in my cup? Um, Well, not right now in my hand, but I recently had some hatchet drip coffee. Hatchet is a roaster in the highlands of North Carolina. I think it's Blowing Rock or Boone, somewhere up there. It's Boone. Um, yeah, I had some of their drip coffee at a local coffee shop, and it was pretty good. Dude, yeah, Hatchet is Hatchet is very, very good. I, there's, if, you, if you could ever get a chance to go to their location in Boone, uh, it, it's wild, man. The amount of foot traffic that comes through that place is crazy. And... Um, I was talking to a shop owner that got to do a tour and talked about how many cups of just drip coffee they go through. And it's crazy. Like it would be like, think of, think of like large major city with a lot of feet traffic. Mm -hmm. That's how much cups they go through. They go through a lot of just straight drip coffee, which, um, but they have some really good, really, really good coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Boone is a, uh, you know, a college town and there's a lot of, uh, it's a growing city, so they have a lot of people there, and it's good. Yeah, we need to t- we need to take a trip up to Boone to go to to go there. Hey, I smell a sponsorship. Ooh, I like it. So, Aaron, uh, what about you? What is currently in your cup? Well, nothing. You said you're okay, out, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am out. But there's a coffee shop that uh, I came across in. I'm going to say it's in the Lake Norman Mooresville area. And I was driving down the road on your bicycle, and I just right? typed in, no, I was, I was on, in my car and I was driving down the road and I just typed in coffee. Now I was out of the city limits and it took me to this church and I was like, wait a minute, there's no way that a church is going to have like respectable coffee. Okay. But dude, I showed up. And there's this place called Defined Coffee. Defined Coffee. And it's it's it, it's in a church lobby, and they the business is they they uh, are there Monday through Saturday. They open up Sunday after service, but it's like it's incredible. It's like top notch uh, quality coffee. It's really really good. Well, that is definitely not somewhere I thought you would say that you tried coffee, but kudos to you. No. No, it was like, it, and they have like, uh, they do have hatchet. They have um, four, I think they had Hex there, if I'm not mistaken, and had one other brand, but really, really good. Um, their baristas are, are extremely like qualified and uh, it, it it really was good. So when I Probably went- Probably because they <laughs> use holy water in their coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> da, da, da. all right this is quickly uh, evolving but, so you had some good coffee it was defined yeah, it, and holy uh defined in Lake norman mm-hmm. so and it was really really good i, it I was think anointed. it's Lake norman but but just look it up define coffee if you um, want to feel convicted, it's got a co-working just, space just roll up to this church and say hey no shut <laughs> up <laughs> oh well you never know the lord works in mysterious ways so uh well he does 
So one more thing before we exit what's in your cup. We got some bad news, Tyler. What's that? Dude, one of the coffee, one of the areas, um, one of the shops locally, a grocery store chain that that carries great coffee, like Boutique Bougie Coffee is going out of business. Who's did that? You hear about? I did Earth not. Fair. Really? Earth Fair. So Earth Fair carries Stumptown, uh, Counterculture. Counter they, yeah. they carry quite a few local um, to the area of the co- of the grocery store um, coffee roasters. And they even carry some like Hario products. I think they carry a V60 mm-hmm. and a scale. And, and, um, and it's a bummer, dude. They're going out of business. Wow. Yeah, they, they were a good option for uh, coffee in the Charlotte area. I yeah. wonder, is that like just in Concord, Charlotte or? Every like, Earth Fair. I guess we didn't have enough coffee snobs visiting no. Earth Fair. Anyway, no. we'll pour one out for you. We'll pour out a uh, espresso shot for the Earth Fair. That's right. On to today's episode. What are we talking about today, Aaron? Uh, how you can change the flavor of your coffee. And we're not talking about additives. So not creamer, not honey. Nope. Something nope. like that. What kind of, you're talking Nothing. about your manual brew coffees? Yeah. So we're going to do a pour over and next week we're going to do French press. Yeah, we do love our pour overs, but we we do realize that all of our listeners uh, do not always have a pour over set up or they might prefer something else. So next week we're going to talk with a man who knows a lot about French presses, Mr. Joe Strothman. Yeah. So, th- so I, the thing is with the French press, we know that it's kind of the entry point for, I think, for everybody. I think, I don't know that I've talked to anyone that says they started with a pour over. Most of the time they start with a French press. It just seems to be very easy. Mm-hmm. You don't need filters. You just need a device and a cup and water and coffee yeah. grinds. And so, uh, but with the pour over, you can get some very unique flavors by the different ways that you can extract or the different times that you can extract. And so earlier in an episode, we talked about a pour over recipe and we got a lot of great feedback on that, but I wanted to give another little scenario and a test that I did here recently and how you can kind of, I don't want to say dial in a bag, but you can get, um, you can start crafting a flavor or a taste that you like. Something that's consistent. Um, So We'll call yeah. this. And it's not even consistent. I think it's I think it's where you can play with it and get some flavors that you didn't think you could get out of a coffee bag. Cool. So, so Aaron, it sounds like this is your pour recipe part two. So lay it on us. Yeah. So the first thing that I'm going to get you to do is is kind of the same standard that you always make pour over. We like to do in increments of sixty uh, milliliters in our water pours. Yep. And so we've got our coffee grinds. We're going to allow, um, we're going to do 60 pours for this test. So it's 60 milliliter pours, one after the other in a set time period. Yep. Okay. And just a reminder, 60 milliliters is equivalent to 60 grams if you have a nice scale. Yep. And that would also be uh, two ounces if you want. Correct. But we use the metrics. No, we don't limit. Anyway, start off. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> For this test, we're going to need multiple things. You're going to need 20 grams of ground coffee in your pour-over uh, device, whatever it is. If it's a Kalita, a um, Chemex, uh, I wouldn't recommend a Chemex for this because it's a little harder. A V60, anything that you can replace the cup uh, every pour, uh, every 45 seconds. Um, and then you're going to need multiple cups. So what I recommend you doing is you're first going to pour 60 grams into your 20 grams of ground coffee, and you're going to allow that to extract into a cup. And then you're going to wait 45 seconds. Okay. You're going to replace the cup, and you're going to do another 60 gram pour into a new cup. And you're going to do this consecutively for om- for four minutes or four minutes and whatever it breaks down to. I think, I think I did like eight different pours. Um, no, sorry. I actually did 10 different pours. So I did 10 different cups. It seems like a long time for 20 grams of coffee. Now understand I'm over extracting the coffee. I was about to say, yeah, cause that sounds like near the midway point. It's, it's going to be really, really watery. It is, but here's, here's what I want you to do 
you're going to taste each one of those cups and you're going to start seeing the difference in the two ounce pours. Now I've done this to where I only pour 30 milliliters of water in and I change out the cup every time. So I'm literally tasting every one ounce cup of extracted coffee into uh, a cup. Does that make sense? Yeah. Th- so this all sounds like you're essentially doing a, a cupping, um, but with the same bean. No, norm- normally a cupping would be where they take and you smell the a, a traditional cupping would be where they take the coffee grinds, they put them into a cup, you smell them, then they put water into mm-hmm. those and you you smell the coffee grinds and then you start to stir, you let them steep and then you'll take a cup and scrape away the top crema portion and you'll slurp it to try to get the atomized taste. Yeah, this is, but, yeah I see what you're saying. This, I miss this almost like the pour over version of a cupping, but anyway, sorry. Yeah, it, it is. And so, so <clears throat> you, what you, what you're doing is you're trying to break down the coffee pour over process into small incremental tastes so that way you can start to see where the variance or the flavor changes. And the reason for that is you could take the very bitter first pour and you could take the very watered down maybe fifth pour or sixth pour and you could try to find the balance in between to where you could get a coffee to water ratio that you like and you can craft a cup of coffee that you really enjoy. So does this so the whole goal of this is to really figure out where's the the low and we know where the low is the low is going to be the first pour right that's going to be where where most of our caffeine comes mm-hmm. out and that's where you normally would say it's a a bitter cup or uh, a bitter taste and so then some of our sweeter more fats and proteins are coming out as the coffee grinds sit longer in water and so once we get into that three minute, four minute time period, which is way over extracted, you're getting some very unique flavors that come out of the coffee grinds. Now, I don't know how to extract those in a proper way to where it adds flavor and it doesn't feel watered down. But when you do a one ounce incremental pour or a 30 gram incremental pour over a four and five minute time period, those one ounce cups of coffee taste crazy different, like ridiculously different. And I know this may be seem like a lot of steps, but I'm going to go through this step one more time to kind of go through it slow so that you can do it. Okay. So the, to recap this real quick, you're going to start with 20 grams of ground coffee. And so that's going to be in our pour over filter. Um, remember a Chemex really won't work for this. So it needs to be a single serving pour over setup. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're going to do 60 milliliters or 60 gram pours Mm -hmm. every 45 seconds into a new cup. So does that make sense, Tyler? It does. Okay. So, and what I just recommend is doing, you know, if you've got five cups, do five cups. If you've got eight cups, do eight cups, and it's going to be over extracted and it's, and you're going to get different flows and you're going to see where the, the coffee starts to, um, uh, saturate itself. And so the water doesn't come out properly. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come out as fast as it did at the beginning. It starts to slow down. And so 45 seconds is not going to yield two ounces of coffee like it would at the beginning. There's going to be a lot of variances and a lot of information that you're going to learn through this test that I, I recommend a lot of people just jumping into this test because it, it, it exposes so much of coffee that I think you learn over time. But by doing this to a brand new bag of coffee, I think you can dial it in really, really quick and get a cup that you really, really enjoy. Cool. Well, that's definitely something uh, that probably most people have not tried. So that sounds like a good challenge. I guess I'll have to go break out all my coffee mugs and See if I can do 18 30 ounce pours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, I, I know it sounds like a lot of work, but, but it you is. know, it, 
It, well, it, it is, but like, for instance, here recently, we got a bag of coffee that that should should be good. Like, it's a crafted bag, and the setup and the recipe that I was using, it was just not a good cup of coffee. And, and I was trying everything. I would change my grinds. I was, you know, seeing on my extraction, and I was just like, man, this is, it's like... I tried 15 to 1, I tried 18 to 1 and really tried to to dial it in, but the problem was I was getting some uh flow through the coffee at uh, very early mm-hmm. in the coffee process and the coffee pour, and so a lot of the flavor, the strong flavor was coming out at the beginning. Huh. And so um I I did this test twice and dude, I dialed it in and like it turned into a really good cup of coffee. Um, and I, it was just, it was simply doing this test uh, uh, two different times. This sounds like a good reminder that, um, you know, you could do the same process over and over, but sometimes you might get inconsistent results. So don't be afraid to go back to square one sometimes and experiment to make sure you're getting that coffee flavor that you're wanting or expecting. Yeah, I mean, you have to remember with coffee, there's a lot of trial and error. Like the people that tell you um, this is the def- definitive way to do it, it's it's wrong. I'm just going to call them out. It's like I'm going to tell you on this on this deal, I'm going to tell you a, a pour over recipe, and you're going to try it, and you're going to be like, Aaron, you're a bald faced liar. This tastes like garbage. Well, <laughs> it's a good standard to start at, and I think a lot of times with the 60 gram pours at 45 seconds. Some of y'all are like, Aaron, that's not how you do it. That's just the standard that I start at. I change mine up a lot, but I think I feel like that's a good enough base where I'm not going to tell somebody wrong. Like, yeah, could you change it up a little bit and maybe shorten the front extraction time or shorten the amount of water that you do in the first pour to change the flavor? A hundred percent. But I don't want to put you in the weeds that quick. I just want to tell you, hey, pour 60 grams every 45 seconds till you get 320 grams of poured into your portafilter. And then you'll get 200, I think it's like 257 grams of milligrams of coffee in your cup. And that happens almost every time. And so if I can tell somebody that, they'll try that and then they'll slowly adjust. But if I start putting you in the weeds... You know, if, if you're if you're a listener to this episode and or a listener to the podcast and you've been on for a season, then you're probably in the weeds with us. Um, <laughs> We're wandering in but, the wilderness together, always searching yeah. for that better cup of coffee. Well, Aaron, yeah. thanks for that recipe or whatever you want to call this with pour overs. But uh, that sounds good for this time. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about French presses on the next episode. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. So uh, I'm very interested to your test and, you know, your uh, your feedback in this and test or experiments that you've tried where you've been able to, you know, learn some information. So please uh, throw it into my DM. Throw, like send me a video of what you've done or tag us what's in your cup. Use the hashtag what's in your cup and tag us on Instagram coffee snobs podcast or you can tag me aaron beaver a-a-r-o-n-b-e-a-v-e-r we love to share information and if you ever want to be on the podcast she's hit us up we have a super easy way of getting people on and sharing your story so um i hope this episode has been knowledgeable you know i hope it's in the pursuit of getting the best cup of coffee you can and uh yeah i hope it's been good yeah, well, again, people probably don't want to slide into my DMs, but if you do want to reach me on social media, Ty Dan, C-T-Y, D-A-N-C-Y. And as Aaron said, we love listener feedback, so reach out to us through any means necessary, and we will see you on the next show. Adios. Adios.